Welcome to Psychic Medium, Tony Green. I am Tony Green, the Psychic Medium, and I just want to let you know in advance, there have been many technical issues today um, on every level with ev from a blog talk, their, their site, their website isn't even up right now. So we're just going to do the show for as long as we can and the best that we can and hope for the best results. Okay, excellent. Uh, first and foremost, I will never reach out to you. So on any platform, any podcast, any anything, any social media site, I will never reach out to you. Please don't get scammed. Second, I'm still running my program. Um, the self program for uh, self confidence, self esteem, self worth. This coming Saturday is um, actually self worth, I believe. Third, um, I do this show every Monday at 11 a.m. and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And uh, those are central time, so you can join in. Uh, ask questions, um, connect with loved ones up above, whatever it is that you choose to do with the show. Just a little um, FYI, I come on this show, which airs on TV, um, WSCS, and all of their affiliate channels and their streaming channels, and um, all of their podcasts. And on Rude Rangers TV, all of their streaming channels, radio stations, and podcasts. And I give two hours a week minimum on this show of answering questions and connecting people with their loved ones on the other side. Please do not, um, if you ask questions in the comments, at any other time than my show, I'm not going to answer them. I'm actually working at that time. And if it's an emergency, if you really, really need the answer and you can't wait for a show, please book a session. I do sessions. I do private sessions. Please book a session. Don't Go in the comments and tell me this is urgent. If it's that urgent, book a session. This is the only time I answer questions for free. And I think it's pretty fair. Just saying. Okay, now that I've said that, um, I'm going to go to uh, starting the show. Should we do names today? Yeah, I feel like we should do names. The first name I'm hearing is Joe or Joseph, but then I hear, hey, Joey, or yo, Joey, and then the next name I hear is Fred, but then I hear Frederica, so however that fits for you, and these are usually names of loved ones on the other side, your name or the name of something in between, like a pet, a sister, a brother, a family member, whatever it is. The next name I'm hearing is Tiffany, and then the name Stephanie, Josie, that reminds me, Josie. Um, the next song I'm hearing is Jacqueline. The next song I'm hearing, or not song, I'm so sorry, you guys, those are names. The next name I'm hearing is Mike or Mickey. Um, and those could be the same person, like somebody named Mike that was called Mickey, or they could be two separate people, however it fits for you. Willie, and, and okay, if I, sometimes it takes me a moment to get the name and I apologize for that. Um, There's a name that starts E-N, and I'm sorry, I can't get the rest of it, but if it's for you, you're going to know it's for you. The next name is Luciana. The next name is um, 
Sandra or Sandra, however you pr pronounce it. Pete. And then um, I'm going to do two more names. I hear Willie again. And then the next name I'm hearing is uh, Jan. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the next thing is I'm not doing songs tonight because they're asking me to do confirmations. So usually at this point, I would be singing like a fool, um, but I get to do confirmations. So if any of this makes sense to you, it could be um, someplace that you went with somebody's when you see this, when you hear it, when you, um, or if you went there or this was there, excuse me, I'm so sorry, um, but this could be, uh, oh, So someone on the other side thinks they are just hilarious right now. I'm just going to tell you that. That's a great power that you learn there. Anyway, um, if this is for confirmations. So if this was their favorite place thing or it reminds you of them or if you hear it, see it, it it's your favorite place or thing. It's your confirmation that your loved one is with you. St. Tropez is the first place. And I, two places I have been hearing all week, St. Tropez and Rio de Janeiro. And those could be for two separate people. They could be for the same person. It could be for a hundred people. The next place that, or thing that I'm hearing is Paris. I feel like these are going to be, uh, there might be a lot of locations when you're expecting other things, just take what you get. And there's, it's not only Paris, France, there's like Paris, Texas or Paris, whatever. So for whomever that fits, please just know it's for you. The next confirmation is butterflies. And I'm actually seeing a, a lot, a butterfly with some orange and a butterfly with some blue in it, but any butterfly, any butterfly is a confirmation your loved one is with you. Um, Wilm, Wilmington, Wilmington. The next thing is rose, and then I'm seeing like a red rose, a white rose, a pink rose, so I don't think the color really matters. I just think um, that roses are very, like, ro it's if yours is a rose, it's a rose. Um, the next one, the next confirmation is a June bug. What is a June bug? Okay, the next confirmation is, um, I'm just hearing the word winter. So, so something, something about winter would definitely remind you of your loved one. Um, the next confirmation is a is Daisy. And if that's a name, it's okay. If it's the flower, it's okay. The next confirmation is um, licorice. And the and then oh, I, we're not going to go through every food item tonight. We are not. And then I'm going to do two more confirmations, and then we're going to start just getting into questions and other things with the show. The next confirmation from loved ones up above is um, clouds. Now. Um, I don't know what that means, but if it's for you, you're going to know what it means. And then the next confirmation, and this is the last one for right now at least. Listerine. 
I know, right? Something that would make absolutely no sense to me makes so much sense to someone out there. They're going, oh my gosh, that, that was mine. He was on his way to get Listerine at the store. Or, oh my gosh, he always smelled like Listerine. Or, you know, something that would make absolutely no sense. Um, somebody is saying, um, okay, so this is important too. Somebody is saying the brooch is diamonds. The brooch is diamonds. The brooch, and I think, you know, you would typically wear a brooch here. That's why I think I'm here. The brooch is diamonds. So if you have a brooch that is old and you think it might be, oh, this is just like costume jewelry, get it checked because you might be pleasantly surprised because I keep hearing the brooch is diamonds. Even if there are other stones in it that might not be, um, you might think they're all artificial or like whatever, just get it checked because the I'm hearing the brooch is diamonds. And then the next message that I'm hearing from someone on the other side to you guys is um, the song Love is in the Air, Love is in the Air, that song. And I guess I do have to sing tonight. I guess it's happening whether we want it to or even if I try to get out of it, they're bringing it through. Um, the next confirmation or the next message that I have for someone who is listening now or maybe listening later on. Um, the city bus, which is going to make sense to so many people, believe it or not. And then the, the next one, the next confirmation, and I know I said I was going to stop, but they just keep bringing them as I go to say other things. And I try to honor what loved ones want to say for you. The next one is I'm seeing a horse, one horse, and it's brown, a brown horse. Um, And then somebody saying, I like my coffee black, no sugar, no cream, but I really love. And then somebody else is saying, but I really love, and it could be the same person, um, but, or it, if it, if it, but I really love espresso. You guys, do you drink coffee? I can't drink coffee. You know, if I can't get something past my nose, I can't get it in my mouth. And coffee just has this very the smell that I can't like it's just yeah I can't say so, yeah who drinks coffee tell me if you drink coffee um okay I'm going to start answering questions but throughout questions I'm going to go back to messages from loved ones also because um I just love that hey Genevieve hey Rebecca I think Rebecca has a question I'm back from my trip. Oh, awesome, Rebecca. That's wonderful. I hope it was was um, beautiful. It was emotional visiting my parents' farmhouse. Oh, without my mom being there. Oh, Rebecca, I'm so sorry for, for you. Um, that is very difficult. That's, that's such a sad thing. I can't even drive through my mom's neighborhood. Um, there are a lot of shopping, there's a lot of restaurants and shopping near where my mom lived. I still, I can't bring myself to go there at all. It's, it's just, yeah, it's so difficult. Rebecca, I'm sending you love. Um, I, um, okay, Re Genevieve says, um, Genevieve says Rio de Janeiro and Butterfly. Those two um, confirmations must be um, must mean something to her. Genevieve, that's amazing. Thank you for letting me know that. I'm going to say Karen wants to know anything from my spouse, Doug. He's in spirit. And then she left a message. He passed in 12 of 2016. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, Karen, that that he passed. Um, 
Karen Doug is the first thing he's going to tell you is there's no need. He's just saying a statement. There's no need for that. I think that's like more of a confirmation statement or something you've been thinking about or worried about. There's no need for that. You should know what that comment means, even if I don't. The next thing he is going to say, oh, Doug, what, what do you really want to say to Karen? Okay, Karen, the next thing he really wants to say is to let go of the past. And I just feel this huge like pain right here and like in something in my throat like like you have so much heartache or words that are unspoken like something that needs to come out so karen for you everybody listening everybody re-listening we're gonna do a healing and or clearing on all things related to this um we're gonna like let, let go of the pain from the past we're going to heal, clear, release that. You guys, this one's probably going to get to me. Um, all that caused it, all that kept it, all the reasons why we held on to this. We're going to heal, clear, release that. And then all that this has caused and kept, we're going to heal, clear, and release that. And then we're also going to clear the bitter and keep the sweet. You know how we say it's bittersweet? We're going to clear all that's bitter and remove that, release that, let it go. And then all the hurt, sorrow, sadness, grief, mourning, any and or all of those associated with this. I, and I would say from losing someone, but I don't want it to be put in a little box. I want it to be all encompassing. So we may have sorrow or pain from a breakup or uh, something that happened to us or something that, you know, it, losing, uh, losing a, a position or a company, it doesn't matter what our pain is from. We just want to heal it because we want to move on in a healthy, positive way. Okay, uh, Karen, the next thing. Doug would say is go out, have fun, live your life. Make sure you're dancing. <laughs> and then I think I'm hearing two songs combined. Um, da -na -na -na, na -na -na -na. <laughs> <Do. laughs> that song. <laughs> and then I feel like they, I can't get the beat of it, but I feel like dancing. Dance night away. I think these are three songs about dancing that are totally combined, Karen. I hope that makes sense to you. I hope that helps you. I hope it brings you something. And then the I'm gonna get one more message from Doug for you. And that message is um okay. Remind them. I'm going to just say, remind them. And I'm going to leave it at remind them. You're going to know what that is for and what that means. Remind them. And that is what Doug has for you, Karen. I hope that's, that that is so helpful. Hey, Fawn. Um, Butterfly and roses, daisy, licorice. It's all linked to my mom and dad and stepmom. My boyfriend loves Listerine. Genevieve, my whole show is apparently for you tonight. I actually was reading your messages right before I came on, Genevieve. Thank you for that. Love, love, love it. Also, um, 100%. Um, Love that. Um, uh, he, it, I, you know what? I think, Karen, I'm just going to say that I think they know he was a good man. I really do think they know he was a good man. Um, 
Uh, first and foremost, you know, I'm going to channel a little bit here. I might not go into the whole channeling thing, but I know what's about to come in is channeling. What is a good act to one person is a bad act to another person. Someone can do something and have the purest intentions and someone else might think that that is not so pure. Our state physically, mentally, emotionally has always to be taken into consideration. And sometimes people do not remember when people are in pain, they may not, and whether this is pain that is of an emotional, psychological, or uh, physical nature, they are not going to always behave the same way as if there was no pain, no trauma, no struggle. A very, a person who is financially okay is going to react to situations very differently than a person who is in survival mode. And a person who is suffering um, with very little time left is going to react very differently than the person who feels as though they have all the time in the world. Yes, please remind them, remind them, remind them. But it's important for us to remind ourselves not to judge ourselves, not to judge others. People behave and act from what they know, not what we believe is right or wrong. You know, I, I was, I was, I was I, I, so that I'm gonna I'm just gonna say this to you guys because there is so much judgment and separation and right and wrong in this world and I was on the I was with a, a talking with I believe a client or someone I don't I don't I I honestly don't remember whom I was speaking with but one of the things that I brought up is everybody you know we're always in this space where we think about karma being good or bad or indifferent or whatever and this channeling came through about um and i'm probably going to massacre it now because i'm not doing the the channeling now but we get what we call bad karma for what we believe is bad, not what anybody else believes is bad. So if we do something and we judge ourselves, or somebody else judges us and we take on that belief, then we will self-punish or self-sabotage in whatever way we Do. And we won't even realize it until after we've healed that judgment, not even the act of what we did, just judging the act of what we did. So I'm going to do a clearing and a healing and release for all self-judgment, all that caused the self-judgment, all that kept it. We're going to clear, heal, release all of that, every bit of it. Um, and then any self-punishment or self-sabotage from that, we're going to heal, clear, release that. And I'm going to tell you, each person lives their life in a certain, you know, in a certain way. And everybody may not agree with the way you live your life, but that's none of their business. And it's none of your business whether they agree or not. It's, it's nobody's business how you choose to live your life, how you choose or what you choose to do. That's your business. And if you're okay with it, don't share it with other people because one thing people are full of is opinions on things they know absolutely nothing about and circumstances they may never have to face. 
Now, let me repeat that. Something they know nothing about and circumstances they may never, ever have to face. And a lot of judgment from other people comes from jealousy. I had a really, really good friend. We're going to see where your guys' judgment level is. I had this really amazing friend and um, there was nothing intimate between us. We had the best friendship. He was one of the most kindest people to me in my life, including family members. He was just so good to me and he blessed me in so many ways with no expectation of anything from me. And I made the sad mistake of feeling like I could share some of those details with one of my friends or somebody I thought was a friend, but that person obviously felt some way about it because when the first opportunity came, the thing out of that person's mouth was that I was going to get bad karma. Can you say you're hating on my blessings without saying you're hating on my blessings? Now, I'm a person that all of my life, I have given and given and given and given and given and given. And I don't think anybody that I gave anything to deserves any bad karma because I blessed them. It was my choice to bless them and help them and give in whatever way I decided to, just like it was this person's choice to do that for me. But this hating but hussy, <laughs> and she was, she, she was a very jealous whatever person, couldn't wait to say that I was going to get bad karma for that. Really? Well, maybe that's my good karma for all the blessings I gave to everybody else. It's all in perspective. And this is why you don't share with other people. Because people will have an opinion about everything except for their own darn lives. Except for their own trifling little lives. So keep your blessings close your eyes open and your mouth closed. And that way you don't have to deal with that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, okay. Deborah Rose wants to know, can you see me doing self-employment? Absolutely. If you know, if you're new here, Deborah, welcome. Um, and you know, I am the biggest advocate for people even if you have to start off slow and grow whatever you have to do have your own thing going you don't know where that can grow to okay take whatever you have for self-employment especially if it's your own business idea start slow start where you start where you are and grow. I feel like um I feel like I don't know why Deborah, I feel like you're going to be working with people. This is going to be like not like I mean most self-employment does work with people. I just hear you're going to be branching off on your own and whatever you do, it's going to lead you down a road that is unsuspecting with a lot of opportunities on it. I feel like you'll be um, in a lot of ways communicating with people. Please, Deborah, please uh, confirm for me what, if this makes sense to you. I know sometimes people don't want to put their idea in what they're going to be doing 
in because they don't want people to scoop it up. But Deborah, I just feel like you're going to be working on your own. You're going to go off on your own. And it's going to go, it's going to ebb and flow it, like the river. <laughs> and I hear that song, um, like the river, <laughs> shut your mouth and ascend and deliver. Something like the river. I hear that like the river. It's just going to be like the river. It's going to like have time or areas of it that are going to go very quickly and have a very good flow to it. And then there are going to be times when it's going to be calm. Don't let the calm times freak you out when you're when your business slows down. That's when you catch up on everything else. Re, re um, establish, send out your emails, do your things. And then because it's about to pick up again. Um, so, Deborah, please stay. Um, uh, yeah, OK. She says, yes, I have a communications degree, but also creative and healing. 100%. I get you're going to be. Deborah, whatever you're doing, I see you being with groups of people more than necessarily one-on-one. -on -one. There may be some one-on-one, -on -one, but I see groups of people and I feel like you need to, to go with this. Um, not feast or famine. No, um, not that. Don't, don't take that, Deborah. It's not feast or famine. It is definitely going to be... Um, There's an up and down. There's a cycle to businesses, especially if you're doing healing and energy work. The full moon, depending on things, is always a much busier time than the new moon. Full moon brings out brings brings things to the forefront. And the new moon, people tend to be a little bit less um, intense or have less of their emotional stuff up front. So it kind of runs sometimes in that cycle. Um, I see you putting some kind of programs together with this. Maybe you're only going to do groups. I just, I feel like there will be one-on-one, -on -one, but I feel like you're going to really enjoy however however it starts and however it goes i just see that eventually it will be like group settings and i'm not talking hundreds of people deborah it doesn't need to be hundreds of people it could be five to ten people is a group 20 people is a group it doesn't need to be hundreds of people so when i say groups of people please don't misunderstand that for you know um for hundreds or thousands of people i know sometimes people want they they think that it it will be groups though for sure for sure for sure deborah so hey grandma kitty hey um i'm gonna go to the next thing who is uh danny or danny i think it's it, as i come closer to the camera or closer to the chat, Daniel, Danny G. What kind of relationship will I have with? <laughs> Didn't you just ask me this on Monday? Um, friendship. Uh, Danny, I feel like it's going to be a friendship. I don't feel like it's possible for it to go any further because one or both of you have other things going on. I do feel like there will be points where the friendship fades and then it gets stronger. I do feel like there's going to be a point where you may get frustrated with the friendship. Listen, Here's what I'm going to say. If if you're a guy and you're friends with a female, um, it's okay. Don't have expectations because when females go into a friendship with a guy, nine times out of ten, it's always going to be a guy a friend for them. And I know sometimes guys uh, go into friendships with women waiting for that shot or that opportunity, 
this will not be that, Danny, no matter how understanding or how good or whatever. Um, for some reason, I just feel like that's not going to be there. I do feel like she's going to have some other things going on. And I do feel like, is it her? Is she gonna be? I do feel like you may even think about um, moving on from the friendship at some point, Danny, or moving on, moving, relocating, something like that, Danny. So that's what I'm getting for you. I hope that's helpful. Um, T. Lynn wants to know, will I receive the financial resources to get on my feet again and start a business helping at, at risk, less fortunate? Uh, is this going to come in? Uh, not as much as you would hope for. Not as much as you would want or hope for. I do feel like you have to look up some grants, federal, and then some local. I also feel like you need to do some fundraising of whatever sort you would want to do. It's going to be having and Getting and maintaining financial support is where this is going to be the biggest job for you. And some of the best nonprofits out there that stay afloat, they have a person that they hire to do grants, local and federal, um, fundraisers, they find the money. They have money people, people whose it's their only, their position is finding money, finding donors, finding um, people who are willing to, like angel investors, and seeking out every possible grant. And I feel like this might be something that is very good for you. You don't necessarily, if you find someone who is looking to start a business like this or go branch off on their own, you may be able to work on a commission basis with them if they're doing it part time and have something else and this is spare income. You may be able to work on a commission basis with them, giving them a percentage of every grant or um, donation or every fund raised. I feel like there is somebody out there that would be willing to work in that way with you. I do feel like you also need to be very careful of allocated funds and that they go where you say they're going. Um, just in case somebody comes and looks at your books with a fine tooth comb at some point, I do again feel like I'm going to say this, you need to narrow your field of, I'm just getting like, you can't save every duckling. So have the group of ducklings that you'd like to save. Um, start out specific. It can always grow later but start very specific, like you might want to say, I'm going to work with everybody throughout the city, or I'm going to work at people who are at risk of being in a gang or this and this and this. You might have to, you know, just in the beginning, especially narrow it down. Later on, you'll be able to have like, these are the at-risk, this is the people that work with the at-risk girls. This is the people who work with the at-risk boys. These are the people who work with, you know, whatever. And one thing that I've always said, and I believe this, one zillion percent. There is no part of me that does not believe this. If you are working with at-risk kids, younger kids that would possibly be in um, gangs or commit criminal acts or whatever it is, 
get military people involved and start a military, uh, like a military cl um, type classes and exercises for them. And the second thing I would say, if I were starting something like this, and do what you want with this, T. Lynn. If I were working with at-risk youth, there would be three things I would do right away. I would have retired vets and military or military people, male and female, come in and set up camp to create that sort of... Um, strictness, family, and uh, everything that they can do. The second thing I would do is start small businesses that the, the youth could do, such as a lawn mowing company, snow removal, if you're in that area, um, bicycle repair, um, and have them doing those jobs, refrigerator, not refrigerator, uh, washer and dryer repair, whatever it is. So they're learning some life skills at the same time and they're learning how to do business, uh, whether they're working the books or they're working the um, actual repair part of it. That's the next step that I would do. And I know a lot of people are saying, you know, the, the social media and computers are the next wave. Yes, but that also can be a slippery slope if you're working with at-risk kids. And then I would also have volunteer counselors in there that they could talk to. And that would be the third thing I would do um, to help them with anything going on in their personal like those are the three things. And the small businesses would also be a source of income for your nonprofit. All right, that's, that's what I have. That's what I would have. And I also have them like as part of the small business area, starting um, agricultural stuff like plants and gardens and such like that. Because, you know, for all the reasons that you would do that. I hope that's helpful, T. Lynn. I really do. Um, okay, so she said it's domestic violence victims. Um, okay, that's not, a, okay, okay, so I'm going to make a slight correction here for you. They are at risk, but it's not the same as what I would have thought. They're already being violated, not at risk of being violated. So a lot of what I said might not apply to you, but I would definitely be very um, strategic with that business. And there are a lot of things you can do with that, such, you know, with that type of business, depending on how you're helping them. And that's really, really important. I do think you should still do it. I do think you need people, someone to help you get funds. I do think you should work with donations. I do think you should have still, if some of the women are not skilled, you should have groups that can help get them skilled. I think you're going to need to work with people and safe houses you're going to need to be, and you may know some of this and you may not, but it's coming through me. So I'm going to give it to you. You're going to need to have very, work with somebody who's already done this. And you, because there's a whole system of doing this as far as, because sometimes you can tell somebody as much as you want certain things but once you get them out you have to get them someplace else safe where that person can't get to them so please uh yes you can do this be very 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 smart about the way you do it 
Okay, T. Lynn, I hope that is helpful for you. Mystic Raven, hey, how are you? How long does it take for a loved one to cross over? I heard from the Catholic that it takes about 40 days. Mm -mm. Is that about the same time that you have experienced? No, um, not at all. I know people who... It's, I'm going to answer this in a couple of different ways. Some people don't want to cross over right away. Um, I know of a couple that were together for over 50 years and they passed within three days of each other. And the guy passed first, but he waited for his wife and then they left together. Um, that's rare. Typically, as soon as you pass, as soon as your body is not as viable, like viable, you, you have no oxygen or your, your body is compromised in some way, you're, you leave your body. And I've had three near death experiences and this has been you 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 leave your body and then you you start to go up um once and that's just a gravitational thing you're you don't have an awareness of that now you can have a choice depending on how compromised your body is and it, so i'm using the word compromise so the show doesn't get xed but let's just say you lost air coming to your body, okay? But that wasn't permanent. That was just until like, let's say you passed out and were extremely unconscious and it was a near death. And then whoever was stopped, but your body, your spirit is already outside of your body, then you, could pop back in your body and resume a life cycle because you would start breathing again. You have the capability to start breathing again. But if, if for example, you can't start breathing again for whatever reason, then you would automatically start pulling up. Now there is a point while you're going up and this happened to me in my last one where you're seeing family, you're seeing friends. I saw family members, but then there was a point where there was something, I saw my dogs actually, and I was pretty far up. I was, it was beautiful. It's like the most majestic, loving, beautiful feeling there is. Um, but then I saw my two dogs and I saw all the possibilities of what could or would happen for them. And I made a conscious decision not to go. Had I not seen them, I don't know. I don't know what would have happened if I had not seen them, but I'm happy I did because then, you know, I came back for them and, and yada, 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 here I am today. Um, so uh, it does not take 40 days. Maybe perhaps once you get to the other side, and you go through your full healing process. No, that doesn't even take 40 days. That doesn't even take 40 days. No, no, no Mystic Raven. Um, and I know some people have come to me and said, I know that they just passed and it might be too soon to communicate with them. Mm, I've not had that experience. The only time it's difficult for me to communicate with someone or I refuse to communicate with someone is if they haven't transitioned yet. If they haven't fully transitioned, I, mm, 
I don't want anything. I won't communicate with them. But if they have fully transitioned, which I've had people fully transition and within 24 hours and I can communicate very easily with them. So I guess that is my knowing and understanding. So I hope that's helpful. I really hope that's helpful. Uh, Laura, how does my future look? Laura, that's a full on reading. So if you could please give me a specific question on a specific area of your future, I'll be happy to answer that. But I don't do full, like how does my whole future look on here? It's typically one question. And then I'll give you as much as I can on that, okay? Um, thank you for that. Uh, Colette, let's see, hopefully this is a good question. Thank you, Colette. I already like you so much. <laughs> Colette says, Colette, you're a woman after my own heart. <laughs> Colette says, you always look so nice. Thank you so much. Um, that's very kind of you to say. <laughs> I want to make a joke so badly. I think I'm so funny. You've already given me more compliments than my last boyfriend, Colette. So we're good. <laughs> oh, I think I'm funny. I should be like the psychic stand-up person. Um, Cause there are so many snarky, funny things that I just always want to say. That would be so inappropriate unless I was a comedian. <laughs> Oh, can I ask if my two brothers saw our house fire? I want to make sure I'm understanding this. So I might ask you to clarify something. What was the lesson? Was it that I had too many craft items because my brother threw everything I own in the... No. Um... So I think there's two questions here. The first one is, um, can I ask if my two brothers saw our house fire? Do you want to know, did, did they start it? Did they see it? Um, I want to make sure I understand that part of it correctly. Sometimes, you know, we believe based on our, again, karma, or perceived karma or judgments that there's always a lesson and it's always a bad lesson. Sometimes things just happen and it's not because we're being taught any lesson. It's just things happen, right? It's not because you had too many crafts. It's um, is that a judgment you gave yourself? Is that a judgment somebody else gave you? Well, as my let me move this really quick for you. As my Italian aunt would say, pump on that, you know, little old lady um, would definitely say fungu on that. You know, that's, don't just, the fact that your brother threw them all out, I feel like that was just frustration and feeling like needing to get through everything and just get the job done, get everything out and get the job done. But no, don't, don't, um, don't feel like you did anything wrong or that you deserve that in any way you did not. Um, what I can say is again, other people's opinions are not your problem. Other people's thoughts and judgments are none of your business. Now, I'm, I'm very sorry that uh, they threw everything away. Um, uh, that just breaks my heart for you. It really breaks my heart for you. But I do feel like in part what they were doing, I don't feel like it was malicious. If, if I'm wrong, it's okay. 
I feel like they were just trying to to get a job done as quickly as they can. Men, you know, I, I'm going to just say this, you guys. We want men to be understanding and emotional and to listen and to be soft. But then we also want them to be the protector and the provider. Pick a lane. Pick a lane. Men don't look at things sentimentally and emotionally the way women do. Women tend, we are the, you know, emotional ones for child rearing, right? Men, when there was, you know, go out there and hunt and pull food back or whatever they had to do, uh, they were built strong and resilient and so many women come to me and say, oh, and I try to, you know, have these conversations and tell him about my day. He, that's that's what your best friend is for. That's what your girl, talk to your girlfriend about your day. Talk to your man about your boobies. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> talk to your man about your kitty cat, your boobies. That's going to keep their attention because that's their testosterone fix. And I'm not being cruel about that or crass. I'm just saying, um, this is what a man is. And that's why we fall for the man because they have all this testosterone because they're very rare. Yeah. You know, we, we like that about them, but then we get upset when they're not like all estrogeny. It just, it is what it is. I don't, I don't know if, if it was malicious on your brother's parts, I really do apologize for that. Um, and that's probably not the best thing. Um, yeah, you were making candles. <laughs> okay, so apparently Colette was making candles. Started the house on fire. I'm not laughing at you, but I'm just like, it was not a lesson except for maybe be more careful making candles. They don't, you know, they, here's what people don't understand. And I am going to say this the best way I can. You need to be able to separate a person from an act. When you're with a person or have a family member, you might not like an, something they did but that's not the totality of that person, right? There are things that happen in our, I, there are things that have happened with my ex. I do not like what happened, but I still love the person, right? So just because I don't love a certain thing that happened or was done does not mean I hate the person. That's just one teeny tiny little thing. So, Give it time, sweetie. And if they hold on to that, that's on them, not on you. Don't don't worry about that. I'm actually going to do some a little bit of clearing on that. I'm going to try to have time to answer this. Um, if you're taking questions, I would like to ask, can I please connect with any of my ancestors? I'm adopted and have never <clears throat> had any inkling I had ancestors who would know about me until recently. Ty, I would, okay, um, Ty, I'm going to call you Ty because that's how it's sound, signed. I have very little time left. This airs, I record this for a show that airs and it has an hour time span. I do take questions and I would need a name. Please give me the name of one relative. I am going to tell you that your birth family loved you the ones that knew about you loved you a great deal and felt this would be the best and oddly enough i'm getting the word most natural thing for you um there is a grandmother or a great grandmother and the thing that I am getting is this was the best and most natural way to handle it. I hope that's helpful, Ty. I really do. I hope that helps you. Um, or Natalie, um, What? It, I hope that's very, 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 very 
very helpful for you. Very helpful. Okay, you guys, I love you so much. I'll be back Monday at uh, noon, noon central. If I did not get to you, if you'd like to join me then, please come back Monday at noon. I'll be answering questions, connecting with you with more loved ones on the other side. So please come back. We will have a great time. Thank you so much.